The mistake would be to put your efforts into a class you don't think you're going to get a lot of value from and then give less effort the one that is really teaching you. One of the main things that someone told me was to listen to what they're saying, take it, but take what you need and then, you know, regurgitate what you actually need to do. Listen to what you're told but make your own judgment. You what if to, I judge, I don't want to listen to any of it? That wasn't in that. That's an option though. Yeah. Because you said, listen to what you're told and then use your judgment to keep what you want. So are you guys familiar with the Pareto principle? It's the 80-20 rule. Have you heard of the 80-20 rule? Like 80% of your money comes from 20% of your effort. Like 80% of the revenue comes from 20% of your client. All these kinds of 80-20. It seems to work pretty good. So as a senior, if I were a senior, I would tell incoming students, you're going to learn everything from 20% of your instructors. It's up to you to decide which 20. Don't even bother with the other 80. They're going to waste your time. And I'll say it that clearly. So I can excel at the right ones, and I need to choose which one. Because in a rigorous design program, each instructor demands so much from you, you cannot humanly do all the work to an equal level. The mistake would be to put your efforts into a class you don't think you're going to get a lot of value from and then give less effort the one that is really teaching you. So then we have to make this decision, which instructor is giving you what you need. So I'm going to help you transform what you just said, okay? So we're going to do this. In some things, it's beneficial to think about things in a binary way. Column A or column B, Pareto principle, okay? So we'll just make two lists. We'll call them column A and B. Make a list of your teachers. The ones that you want to pay attention to and the ones that you're not going to. It's that simple. And if it looks pretty even, I would recommend you kind of make it like shift the effort into maybe two classes because you can do really well in two classes probably out of six. And the other ones just do enough to get by. The mistake that we all make is we try to get an A in every single class. We were taught to do that because you want to make the principal's list, the dean's list, valedictorian, whatever it is. And then you wind up just being average. That's what that A stands for, average. Right? You just want to excel in two and possibly get a C in every other one, possibly even flunk. It doesn't matter. Is that okay? So for me, we now then have to decide, like, how would we know what to put in column A or column B? So you have an input. This is the input here. It's all your classes. Let's say we have five inputs, okay? That's a good number. And we only want to keep two when we leave three. So what criteria would we describe A versus B? It's easier to describe the good stuff. We could ignore the bad stuff. Why might you want to put more effort into one class versus another? What are you going to get out of it? I know the answer myself, but I'm just curious if you guys have some kind of filter to decide. George, do you have a filter? The classes are based on a specific field or area of design. So a lot of time there's, there's weight on something that we're more interested in doing. Yes. And how do you determine that? Mostly based on what we think we can get from those projects. Which would be? Which would be the experience that would help us when we actually get out into the industry. Okay, so you might be like, how practical is this class in terms of what I'm, how closely is it aligned to what it is that I want to do? And how practical is it? You're probably thinking this one thing, but you're not going to say it, but I'll say it for you. Is this a portfolio worthy class? Because you're in that state now. You're a senior. You better get that portfolio together, right? Mm -hmm. Is that one of the criteria? Yeah. Okay, see? We can get out of you one way or the other. <laughs> so is this portfolio worthy? And you all get to decide what's portfolio worthy. So there's no one size fits all, which is the beautiful thing about life. What might be another thing? So we're going to look for that, right? So the opposite of that is it's not. It's like some kind of uh, intellectual exercise. Sometimes we have those things, right? Where the teacher's like, yeah, let's explore shape. Well, shape ain't going to give me a job. Now, what's going to make a portfolio? What are you looking for? Give me some adjectives or any kind of descriptive language that we know. It seems like the, the focus of the audience falls towards to illustration worthy portfolios. Um, sometimes it's like case studies. So it's a one one. It's like you're either going visual or you're getting really shown the, the thought process. OK, so maybe a way to say that is there can be things that are portfolio worthy that you have no interest in doing. So they have to, so this is an example. Is this an example of the work I want? Is that okay? 
So you can work on an editorial class or a packaging class, but you hate packaging. It is portfolio worthy, but it's not what I want to do. So is, is this an example of work that I want? If it's not, it's not. So it has to meet all the criteria. Otherwise, you don't put in category A. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, Matthew here. Let's recap what we learned in this video. Well, the first thing is to focus on the classes that are really helping you develop your portfolio, your voice, and then put very little effort or zero effort into the classes that will have no impact for you after graduation. Because the thing is, the moment that you leave the classroom, that class doesn't care about you anymore. And now you're out there in the real world fending for yourself. So it's really important that you shape and bend your education, your curriculum, and focus on the things that you want to do after you graduate. Okay, so I have a challenge for all of you. After listening to this discussion, I'm curious, what are your goals? What market do you want to serve? What niche do you want to focus on? And how do you want to specialize your skills? Let us know by leaving a comment down below. And if you're a student or if you're looking for more career advice, we've left a couple of videos for you here that you can continue watching to learn more. We'll see you in the future.